to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. I do want to encourage you, if you've not already, to check out my ebooks. All I Needed to Know, I Learned from Columbo, and All I Needed to Know, I Learned from Dragnet. Each of these ebooks examines the careers and histories of seven great fictional detectives and policemen and life lessons that can be learned from them. They are available wherever fine ebooks are sold, or also as audiobooks in the Audible or Apple stores. Well, now let's get into this week's episode of Philo Van. The original air date, May 17th, 1949, and the title is The Butterfly Murder Case. <laughs> They get off tree to perform like that. Wait a minute, hey, Josie. Let go my arm, Joe. I said wait a minute. When I say wait a minute, you wait a minute. Well, what is it? What's with that speech you just made? What's with insulting the customers in my place? Did you hear the hand I got when I finished singing? Sounded like one guy in the whole joint was swatting a fly. What do they know about singing? They don't have to know about no music, Josie. All they gotta know is to pay their checks. You crack to the suckers once more like you just did and you're through. Don't make me laugh. I ain't trying to be funny. You don't have to try. Why don't you get smart, Joe? You know you can't fire me. I got enough to put you away for 50 years, any time I like. Uh, wait a minute. Wait right here. I'll make it fast. Uh, oh. Hello, oh, oh, Mr. Turner, boss. What are you listening at the door for, Angel? Me, boss, listening? <laughs> Not me. I'm your head waiter. I work. I don't listen. Uh -huh. Excuse me, Mr. Turner, boss. Somebody wants... You're having trouble with everybody, ain't you, Joe? I'm not through with you, Josie. You ain't kidding, you ain't. We were just talking about that before you spotted Angel snooping. You were going to fire me, remember? Oh, I didn't say that. What I said was that if you cracked to the suckers once more, you'd be through. That don't mean fired, Josie. That means through. For good. Yet the yet the yet the Josie, please, you've got to listen to me. Who says I gotta? You? Why don't you get lost, friend? I gotta get in my dressing room so I can change my clothes. Do you realize what you're doing? You're ruining me, and for no reason now. Give me back my letters. Not right now. Makes me feel good to see the big shot, Colton DeWitt, in the spot. We're on Breeze out of here, DeWitt. And leave me a couple of hundred bucks for spending money. Scram, I gotta go in and dress. All right, here's your money. Thanks. I hope you live to spend it, Miss Josie Daniel. Oh, um... Hey, what are you doing in my dressing room? I want to see you, Miss Daniels. The gentleman you just left outside was my husband. Well, that's your problem, my friend. It's got nothing to do with me. 
So you're Mrs. DeWitt, hmm? Yes. I know all about you and my husband, Miss Daniels. I know that he was infatuated with you. Know that he wrote you some letters. But that's all over now. That it is. Except for the payoff. When I decide how much I want for the letters he wrote, I'll let him know. Goodbye, Mrs. DeWitt. Listen to me, Miss Daniels. My husband has no idea I know about him and you. But I saw the change in him. Saw him turn from a wonderful man to a broken wreck, living in fear of what you might do with the letters he wrote you. I'll give you $10,000 for those letters. Don't be funny. That wouldn't even buy the envelopes. Very well, Miss Daniel. But I'm telling you now, I'm going to get those letters, even if I have to get you first. Come in. I'm looking for Philo Vance. I'm Vance. Please come in. I was just about to lock up. The office is closed for the day, Mrs... Uh... I'm Mrs. Colton DeWitt. Mr. Vance, please listen to me. It's terribly important. By all means. What is it, Mrs. DeWitt? You've heard of my husband. I know his position in the business world. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Mr. Vance... I've come to see you on a very delicate matter. As a private investigator, that is by no means a novelty to me. I didn't imagine it was, but it is new to me, Mr. Vance. Telling a relative stranger something that is so personal. It's... it's my husband, Mr. Vance. He's in trouble. Oh? Financial or female? What do you mean? It couldn't be anything else, could it, Mrs. Dewitt? No. And it isn't anything else. It's a woman, Mr. Vance. A singer... Her name is Josie Daniels. She's known as the Broadway Butterfly, and she works at the Cat's Paw Club. What about her? She's blackmailing my husband, Mr. Vance, bleeding him. And he's paying her because she threatens to show me some letters he's written. But you know all about it. Yes, but I, I can't let my husband know that I know about it. His pride had begun. Things would never be the same between us if he thought I knew. I want you to buy back those letters or get them any way you like. But I want them. Mr. Vance, here's my bank book. You'll see that I have a little over $10,000 deposited. It's my money, all the money I have in the world. Here's a blank signed check. Use what you have to, to get those letters. All right, Mrs. DeWitt. I'll do it. Thank you very much, Mr. Vance. When will I hear from you? I don't know. I'll go down to the Catspaw nightclub this evening to see Miss Josie Daniels. Where will you be later? I'll be available, Mr. Vance. I'll be close by. Very close by. The cat's poor, you said, huh, Mac? It's nine o'clock. Not much doing here at this hour. There may very possibly be after I arrive. How much further is it? Worried about the meter? Maybe another nickel tops. Hey, Mac, your uh, your face has been bothering me. Where have I seen it before? Well, to the best of my knowledge, it's always been just where it is now, right on top of me. I got your name on the tip of my tongue. I know that face. I've seen it in the pa... Hey! You're that famous private detective, Philo Vance. I'm a private investigator, but the rest of the identification is correct. Oh, so you're the guy, eh? Huh? Yes, I'm the, uh, guy. Well, uh, what do you know? Never can tell who you ride when you're pushing a hack. Know who I ride the other night? I'm not that good a private investigator. Who was it? Uh, oh, I got the name on the tip of my tongue. Well, this is it, Mr. Vance. The Cat's Paw Club. Only it's a little early, like I told you. I don't think the joint is even open yet. I'll find out in a moment. Well, there seems to be somebody else trying to get in and somebody trying to stop him. Here's your money, driver. Keep the change. Thanks, Mr. Vance. I sure wish I could think who it was I drove the other night. I got the name on the tip of my tongue, too. Seems to be a little crowded there. Good night. Good night. Hey, those two guys over the door seem to be battling. Want me to hang around just in case? No, thank you. Good night. Let me find you. What I've got to get in, I must see Miss Daniels. Now look, Mr. DeWitt, chances are Josie ain't in there either, and the club ain't open yet. Nobody comes in until after I open up. Now, well, what do you want? I beg your pardon, my name is Philo Vance. What about it? What do you want? 
Same as this gentleman, apparently. I want to see Miss Daniels. Now, look, both of you, I just got here myself to open up this joint. Chances are Josie ain't in yet yet. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's her. That's Josie singing. I recognize her voice, and I'm getting in to see Josie now, and nothing's going to stop me. So get out of my way. Get out. Now, don't get, get tough, out of Mr. my Do way, it. I said, and stay out. I'm going inside, I said. And I said you weren't. Now, don't get, get out of my way, I said. Get away. Okay, get away. That's Wait. the way you want it. Oh. Oh. Well, he begged for that sock, Vance. You seen him try to force his way into my club? I'm more interested in his condition at the moment. You seem to have knocked him out. We'd better get him inside. Now, we'd better get him to a hospital. My car's right here, Vance. I'll go with you. Very well. I'll take his head. You said this was your club. That means you own it? Yeah. The name's Turner, Have Joe Turner. Yeah, I think this guy's okay, Vance. Oh, I think he will be. Oh, I hope so. You know something? If this happened inside my club, if I sucked him inside the joint... That could take away my license. Mr. Turner, if Mr. DeWitt were inside your club, there'd have been no reason for him to provoke a fight with you. Remember? Philo Vance speaking. This is Markham Vance. Where have you been? I've been calling you home for an hour. You sound like you're after me for a murder, Markham. Sorry, Vance. I didn't mean to give you that district attorney treatment, but I did want to talk to you. About what? There has been a murder, Vance. A nightclub singer named Josie Daniels, known as the Broadway Butterfly. She was strangled sometime between 8 and 10 this evening. We're not exactly sure of the time. I'm reasonably sure of it. I'd say it was between 9 and 10. What? Sorry, Markham. I didn't mean to appear like a genius, but it so happens I was down to see Miss Daniels at 9 o'clock tonight and heard her singing. Oh, I see. Well, Vance, I know you like to get on a murder case as soon as it happens, so I've been trying to contact you. And, incidentally, we have a suspect, Joe Turner, the club owner. Really? I met the gentleman tonight, Markham. In fact, I spent about an hour and a half with him. The hour and a half between 9 and 10.30. 9 and 10.30? And you heard Miss Daniels sing when you were down at the club at 9? Yes. Then I was wrong. We don't have a suspect. No, unless Mr. Turner's a very clever man. How do we find that out? I'm not sure. I've got to pay a visit to a music shop to know whether I know what I'm talking about or not. Hiya, friend. Hiya, hiya. Come in, come in, come in. What can I do for you, friend? My name is Vance. I've just telephoned a number of record companies, and they told me that, that we you... got the largest selection of records in the business, and they were right, friend. They were absolutely right. You want hot records? Well, we got them gone all the way back to Bunny Berrigan, Eddie Lang, the Mound City Blue Blowers, the Memphis Five, the original Dixieland Jazz Band. I wasn't thinking of hot records. You want I want sweet? We got every sweet band from 1920 up to now with the Bar Harbor Society Orchestra, Ray Miller, Whiteman, Lopez, Coon Sanders. What we... I wanted was a vocal record. Vocals, One by... take your your pick, friend. Take your pick. You remember Lee Morse? We yes, got all of I... hers. Eileen Stanley, Lee Wiley, Helen Kane, the first of the Ethel Waters records. What's on your mind, friend? Which one do you want? Well, I was told that a girl named Josie Daniels made some recordings a year or so ago, and that this was the one shop which might have some. Daniels? Josie Daniels, the gal who got knocked off? That's why, right. sure, we got records of hers. She only made two sides of one record, but we got it in stock. She made a thing called Stormy Weather, right, friend? Yes, I believe that's right. Got it in the back, friend. I gotta get it for you. Don't get much call for the record. Now, look, if you want jazz, we got no, Artie I... Shaw, Mr. B.G., got some original Dorsey Brothers, anything you like. All I want is one record, if you don't mind. Okay, friend, if that's all you want, that's all you get. We don't high-pressure nobody into buying nothing around here. I'll get you the Josie Daniels record, friend. Thank Only you. I'm telling you, it ain't much good. And from what I understand, neither was she. <laughs> Uh, sit down, Vance. Please sit down and tell me what you found out on the Josie Daniels murder. I found out for one thing, Markham, that it's possible she did die at 8 o'clock and not necessarily after 9, as I said. I don't think I understand. Well, it might have been a phonograph record I heard playing outside the club the night she was murdered. She did make a record of the song I heard sung while I was outside at 9 o'clock. Oh? What that means, of course, is that the club owner, Joe Turner, no longer has an alibi. And for that matter, neither does Mr. Colton DeWitt, whom Turner knocked out in front of the club. Because chances are the girl was already dead when the fight took place. That's right. Uh-huh. And you know, Markham, I have... Oh, uh, just a minute, please, Vance. District Attorney Markham speaking. Mr. Markham, this is a friend of Philo Vance's. They told me at his office that I could reach him at yours. Is he there? Why, yes, just a minute. It's for you, Vance, a mysterious female friend of yours. Every female is mysterious, Markham, or so they'd like you to believe. <laughs> I'll take it. Thanks. Hello? 
Mr. Vance, this is Mrs. DeWitt. I didn't want to tell the district attorney my name. Can he hear us? I doubt whether he can hear you. Good. Mr. Vance, this is terribly important. Of course, I know the Daniels girl is dead. It's all over the papers. But I want to know whether you got those letters. No, I haven't, as yet. They mustn't turn up now, Mr. Vance. They mustn't. I'll double the figure I told you. I'll pay $20,000 for the letters my husband wrote that woman. Will you, Mrs. DeWitt? I'm sorry you said that. Sorry? Why? Because it proves to me that you must have seen Miss Daniels after you saw me. Which means just before she was murdered. This is District Attorney Markham. The Butterfly Murder Case opened with the finding of the body of Josie Daniels, nightclub singer known as the Broadway Butterfly. Philo Vance, who is working on the case, has revealed that a Mrs. DeWitt, wife of a man Miss Daniels was blackmailing, had been to see him. And while he was in my office, he had received a phone call from her telling him that she would pay $20,000 for the return of letters her husband had written. It is shortly after the phone call, and Vance is still in my office, but has been silent for several weeks. What are you thinking about, Vance? This case. Yes, so am I. I'm also thinking of that remark you made to Mrs. DeWitt on the telephone. You want to know how I knew she'd seen the murdered girl just before her death? Yes. Well, Markham, it's pretty simple. You see, Mrs. DeWitt came to me and offered me $10,000 to get back some letters her husband had written Josie Daniels. Yes, you've told me that. At the time, Mrs. DeWitt showed me her bank book. $10,000 was all the money she had in the world. On the phone just now, she offered me $20,000. Well, she managed to get the extra $10,000 somewhere. No, I hardly think so. I think she got the letters she wanted to pay me to get. She could then offer me twenty, thirty, or even fifty thousand to get them, knowing they weren't to be gotten. Uh. <laughs> Vance, you have no idea how glad I am that you're on our side. What's our next move? The normal thing to do would be for me to see Mrs. DeWitt, don't you think? Yes, but I doubt whether you're going to do it because it is the normal thing. Thank you. You're so right. You see, I know what I want to know about her, but I'm a little vague about her husband. He's the one I want to see, and he's the one I'm going to see. You you don't want to see me, Mr. Vance? Not especially, Mrs. DeWitt. What I would like to know is this. Is your husband at home? He's upstairs. Shall I call him? No, he'll be down. May I use your phonograph to play this record I brought? Of course, Only I don't understand... You will, believe me. Uh, how does this machine work? The last button on the right-hand side starts the phonograph. Oh, yes, of course. Well, here we are. Don't know why There's no sun up in the sky It's a nice voice, isn't it, Mr. Vance? Very. By the way, Mrs. DeWitt, what did you do with the letters you took from Josie Daniels just before she was found dead? Oh, I I made a mistake in offering you the $20,000. I knew it right after I'd done it, but I wanted to cover up the fact that I'd seen her. I realize that. That That wasn't very smart. That record! Who put that record on? Who put it on? Colton! I never want to hear that voice again! Never! All right, now. What is this? What kind of game are you two playing? Colton, Mr. Vance just asked if he could I play... I know what he asked, and I know why he asked it. That was Josie Daniels' voice. That was Josie singing. I was supposed to hear the voice and confess I killed her. That was it, wasn't it, Vance? That's what you expected me to do. Really, Mr. Vance? Well, I'm not going to do it. She's dead, and this record is smashed. I'll smash every record she ever made. I'll buy them, and I'll smash them. Every one of them. Oh, yes, I'll Colton, smash every dear, one of them. Please, please, you're upset. You're all excited. I'm excited, of course. I'm excited. This was a trick, I tell you. A trick of Vance's to make me break down and admit I killed her. I wanted to. I would have if I'd had the chance, but I didn't do it. You hear me, Vance? Your trick didn't work. I didn't do it. Do you hear me? I didn't do it. I hear you all right, Mr. DeWitt. I didn't do it. But that doesn't necessarily mean I believe you. Hiya, friend. Hiya, hiya. I remember you. You were in yesterday to pick up a Josie Daniels recording. That's right. Sure, sure, I know. I got a great memory for faces. Yes. Now, do you want something else like the record player now? 
That's Hank Byrne, best seller we got in piano. Of course, we got Frankie Carl, Lopez, that Limbardo record of humorous with the two piano team going. If you, what you want is piano, we can... Well, it isn't exactly no? what I really want. I know, I know, sure. Long hair stuff. Good, good. Got just what you want. Boston Pops, Philharmonic, got the Aterby record of Claire de Lune, right? That's what you want, ain't it, friend? Classics? No, no, not right at the moment. Uh, you mentioned before that you had a good memory. <laughs> I got a great memory. I can rattle off names of people who made records that you never even heard of. I'm sure. Bessie Smith, Queen of the Blues, Empire City Four, Billy Wilson is Blue Five. Excuse this... my interrupting you, please, but I really have business with you. Did you ever hear of Philo Vance? Who'd he record for? Nobody. Oh. I'm Philo Vance. I'm a private investigator. Philo Vance? Why, I know who you are. You're the private investigator. Yes. Glad to meet you, friend. Glad to meet you. Now, what can I do for you? You remember I told you yesterday that the company for which Josie Daniels recorded said that this was the only shop where her records could be bought. Ha <laughs> ha, sure. They were right. We got records by everybody. George... Never mind. I'm sure you have. Now, this is what I want to know. You say you have an excellent memory. I want you to tell me if anybody bought a record by Miss Daniels in the past few days besides me. Why, sure, sure, I can tell you that now. Let me think. By all means, do. Let's see. He was, uh... Oh, was it a lady? I think maybe... No? Oh, that's... That's a funny thing, Mr. Vance. I can't remember. Sorry I can't help you solve your problem, friend. Problem? What you didn't help me solve was a murder, friend. <laughs> Yeah, who is it? I'm Mr. Turner, boss. It's me. Angel, your head waiter. Could I come in? Come on. What do you want? Uh, Mr. Turner, boss, I just came in to tell you I'm leaving. I got another job. No kidding. No kidding, Mr. Turner, boss. I got a good job in another joint. I'm leaving Saturday. What makes you think so? Oh, I don't know. Guy just offered me a job and I took it, that's all. You're not going anywhere. You're staying right here with me where I can keep an eye on you, Angel. I don't get you, Mr. Turner, boss. No? Well, maybe you'll get this. Don't think I don't know you were around here the night Josie Daniels was killed. Don't think I'm going to let you go somewhere where you can open your yap about what you think you know. Don't think that, Angel, you hear? Yeah, Mr. Turner, boss. I guess I better go now. And where do you think you're going? Out in the club. I got to get things fixed up for tonight's business. See that everything's okay as long as I'm going to be here permanent. I'll see you later, Mr. Turner, boss. <laughs> yeah, Joe Turner talking. This is District Attorney Markham, Mr. Turner. Could you come down to my office? Well, sure, D.A. I guess I could. What's up? Well, Philo Vance will be here, and he's bringing Mr. and Mrs. DeWitt. You want to know what's up? Yeah. It might conceivably be your number. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Turner, sit down. You know Mr. Vance here. Uh, just enough to say goodbye to. What goes on here? What'd you get me down here for, Vance? Mr. Turner, what did Josie Daniels have on you? Have on me? Nothing. She worked for me, that's all. I spoke to your head waiter, a man named Angel, right after I left a record shop this afternoon. He told me you couldn't fire her, that she could have stayed there as long as she liked. Angel told you that... No wonder that punk wanted to quit. Well, Vance, whatever he told you ain't true. My word against his, right? I hardly think so. He'd have no reason to lie. Mr. Turner, when I came along the other night, the night Miss Daniels was killed, you were keeping Mr. DeWitt out of your nightclub. Yeah, sure. Josie was rehearsing and the club wasn't open. Josie wasn't rehearsing. She was dead. Don't give me that. You know she was in there then. You heard her start to sing after a while. I heard a record playing. But more of that later. Markham, please ask Mr. and Mrs. DeWitt to come in here now. Certainly, Vance. Mr. and Mrs. DeWitt, will you come in? Please? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you, Markham. Mr. DeWitt, I was just pointing out to Mr. Turner here that the night Josie Daniels was killed, the night I found you trying to get into his nightclub, we didn't hear Miss Daniels singing. Well, but we did. She was inside the club. That was a phonograph record planted as an alibi. You see, if Miss Daniels were alive then, Turner couldn't have murdered her. Or you either, for that matter. But Vance, there was no record playing when the police broke into the club. I know. Somebody took the record off. And DeWitt and Turner were with me. That leaves only Mrs. DeWitt. No. Uh, no, I know nothing about it. One moment, Mrs. DeWitt. Angel. Yes, sir, Mr. Vance? Come in. Yes, sir, Mr. Vance? Angel, you were paid by somebody in this room to put a record on the phonograph in the Cat's Paw nightclub at 9 o'clock the night Josie Daniels was murdered and to later take it off. That's right, Mr. Vance. I want you to point out the person in this room who paid you. 
The person? Why, sure. That's the person. <laughs> yes, Mrs. DeWitt. Markham, you can arrest her husband, Colton DeWitt, for murder. <laughs> Mrs. DeWitt, was Miss Daniels dead when you went in her dressing room and got those letters? Yes. Yes, she was, Mr. Vance. But I had no idea my husband killed her. I couldn't admit I was there. You understand that? Perfectly. Well, Markham, that clears up Mrs. DeWitt's part in the murder case. Anything else you'd like to know? Yes. What was your lead to Colton DeWitt? Phonograph record, of course. DeWitt had to get that record somewhere. And there was only one store in the city that sold it. I went there, but the clerk wouldn't describe a man who had purchased a recording by Miss Daniels several days before. Then how did you know it was DeWitt? I knew somebody had to start playing the record inside the club, Markham. Somebody had to start it, and somebody had to take it off the phonograph. I found Mr. Turner's head waiter, Angel, and persuaded him to tell me who had paid him to do that. It was DeWitt, who killed Josie in her dressing room, and then came out to the front of the club to establish an alibi. Oh, my poor husband. He should have known that Josie Daniels would cause him trouble. Right from the beginning, he should have known. Perhaps. Only we weren't concerned with the beginning. All we were concerned with was the end of the butterfly murder case. Welcome back. Well, that rendition of Stormy Weather was beautiful. Just a very well done recording. I, I wonder, did they have someone specifically come in and record it? Did one of the radio actresses do it? Regardless, it was superb. Stormy Weather uh, is and was a uh, standard. It was first recorded in 1933 by Ethel Waters and written by Harold Arlen and Ted Kohler. Of course, it's the only song that they used in the episode, but they I think they were able to get away with that because they had the singer killed off early on. I've heard some productions where they get the license to the song, and they sing it, like, into the ground, like, three or four times, often by people who aren't that great with it. But here, it works just right. I thought the clerk inside the record shop was great. You know, really funny, a good illustration of how a bad clerk handles things and won't actually listen to the customer. And that's particularly important with music. And, of course, the big punchline with everything he knew and how much knowledge he had. He did not remember what Vance uh, needed, though. Vance managed quite well. As for the murder itself, it's like, I think, a lot of Philo Vance murders, a bit more complicated than is practical. Oftentimes... 
I think Philo Vance does this here. You know, mystery programs will act like using a recording is almost a perfect crime. Particularly in the days of records. I will never forget that episode of The Whistler we played on The Amazing World of Radio. It was a few years back. I think it may have been one of our first episodes. But this guy had a scheme involving making it look while he was on the air, while he was committing a murder. And he was racing around and there was suspense and he, he, it looked like he'd gotten away with it. And then the record was played and where he was talking, I think there was something like a skip in the record. I forget what exactly, but it revealed that he was not really in the studio. And this one involving hiring someone to put the record on and then letting the person live was even more fraught. Now, let's go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Lisa, Patreon supporter since October, currently supporting the show at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for the support, Lisa. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. We'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Philo Vance. But join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, where... I were the only witnesses. I don't even remember the trial. He wrote me, but I didn't give his letter a second thought until my secretary announced you. You uh, think he's insane? I don't know. But I do know I was almost killed by a car the day he phoned. Oh, good Lord. You think it was Valentine? Well, it could have been. That's as far as I can go. Hmm. That's rather uncomfortable, isn't it? Have something pop out of your past like this? To think of a man spending 14 years behind bars hating you. Yeah, I know what you mean. You've come a long way from defending Hell's Kitchen thieves, Mr. Capper. Yes, I have. And I'd like very much to continue. Uh, What do you propose to uh, do about this? Well, I'll know better when I learn what kind of a character he is. You keep in touch with me. We have a weapon in the threatening letter he sent me. We can arrange a federal charge with that. Get rid of him that way. All right, Mr. Capper. I'll let you know what progress I make. I registered at a... I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.